the founding chairman of Tehreek e Insaf and former Prime Minister Imran Khan, who has been unjustly incarcerated for 315 days, spoke with journalists in Ariala Jail on Friday. He declared that the nation is proud of the judges who have stood by the law and the constitution and refused to be coerced or threatened by the country's powerful intelligence agencies. Mr. Khan bemoaned the loss of lives of security personnel in terror attacks in the country, while the country's powerful military establishment and intelligence agencies, whose job it is to protect the citizens, are busy trying to destroy PTI. Speaking of the budget, Imran Khan said that the country's economic and financial woes can only be fixed through investment. He lamented the increased and additional taxes imposed by the illicit government on the salaried class of Pakistanis. Mr. Khan stressed that there should be no misrepresentation on the issue of negotiations. He said that there is no point in holding talks when decisions are made by a certain chief. Delivering a message to the party, Imran Khan said that it is imperative to end groupings and to unite. It is a life and death decision for Pakistan. Quote, the judiciary is striving to free itself from the clutches of the establishment. I am confident we will end the interference of the establishment with judicial matters soon. Unquote. Chief Justice Lahore High Court Malik Shahzad stated while speaking at an event in Rawalpindi. Justices of the Peshawar High Court, the Islamabad High Court, and judges of the anti-terrorism courts have all revealed pressure and intimidation by the ISI, Pakistan's premier intelligence agency on cases related to Imran Khan and PTI. Rallies took place around the country on Friday to call for the restoration of democracy and the release of Imran Khan and all political prisoners. The people of Karachi, Pakistan's largest city, rallied at different locations across the city, calling for the release of Imran Khan, female workers unjustly imprisoned, and the return of the people's mandate. The victimization of Salam Javed and Alia Hamza extends beyond arrest after arrest in baseless cases to physical torture by locking them in parked metal prison vans for hours in 40 degrees Celsius or 105 degrees Fahrenheit temperatures. Meanwhile, Hassan Niazi, Heather Majid, and many other prisoners continue to languish in deplorable conditions in military custody, with their rights being grossly violated. Pakistan Tehreek and Saf activists and their non political relatives are being abducted and forcibly made to disappear across the country, while police and security agencies refused to release the abductees despite court orders. Several days have passed since Shabazz Gil's brother, Ghulam Shabir, journalist Shahzad Gil, Professor Zahoud and Mazhar Mashwani, Ali Bukhari and other people were kidnapped, but no organization is owning up to their arrest. The Chief Justice of Pakistan, Justice Ghazi Fez Isa, remains completely silent on the matter. Carl Skow, Deputy Executive Director of the UN's World Food Program, says 1 million displaced people in southern Gaza are, quote, trapped without clean water or sanitation and the level of destruction is shocking." Unquote. Meanwhile, as their summit wraps up in Italy, a group of seven G7 leaders stated that the UN's Palestinian Refugee Agency must be allowed to work unhindered in Gaza. At least 37,266 people have been killed and 85,102 wounded in Israel's genocide in Gaza since October 7th last year.